All right, fig lovers, this is Ross, the fig boss. Today we are reviewing a fig called Marangiana. It's an interesting Italian fig that's a honey type. It's beautiful, it's productive, it grows well. And in my mind, it is a nice alternative to the Dotato. And I actually think it, uh, it tastes better than Dotato or uh, Kidota, Peter's Honey. There's many names for it. And um, it's also so far what I've noted, a pretty decent fig in moisture, although the eye is open, we'll examine that. The shape is good. Um, however, I do find that it is mid season and I think it's slightly better of an option than the Dotato uh, in general. It's bigger, more beautiful, and the flavor is definitely better so far from what I've noted. Uh, there's the fig down there, the bigger one in the bottom right. I recently harvested two. It's the first two figs of the year off of this tree. And um, I just had to try one. I was really curious. You can see the color there. It actually does have a longer hang time. See the, um, the difference in color there? It's kind of crazy from one side of the fig to the next. It ranges from that yellow, gray, green color, and then to this maroon or purple color. And that's what I think is a bit tricky with this fig, is the hang time. Um, you do wanna let it hang as long as possible, but you'll see the figs on the tree, they're turning color, but they're not yet soft. Um, again, they're turning color here, but not really soft. Even when they get color to them, you could still argue that they need more time. And that's where the patience comes in and that's where this fig can, can really shine because this fig here actually is definitely not ripe. As odd as that looks and sounds, the neck is not soft enough by my standards. This one here I think is ripe. So we will pick this one today. And one little tip there on harvesting Instead of pulling it in the same direction that it's hanging, go the other direction and then pull it by its stem and it comes off real easy. Now, we had a lot of rain last night. So this is a nice test because the figs look pretty much like nothing happened. Um, however, you'll see here on the eye, I'm gonna open this up. I noted even when the fig was hanging on the tree, there's mold at this eye. Beautiful. Even by the way, without the rain last night, actually there's mold in these other ones, just at the location at the eye. And that's obviously not great. That's not what you want. And so for that reason, this open eye almost completely eliminates the possibility of really of seriously trying to grow it in a humid climate. I, I know that sounds a little bit um, un, maybe unfair, but it's the reality in that I don't want to be eating mold. Mold's not good for you. Um, it's kind of a fact of life when growing figs in humid climates. But again, here's the one I just harvested and you'll see that mold in there at the eye. It's kind of dark, but if I move that, yeah, there's a lot more than, than you might've thought. And so, I mean, that's even one reason why a fig like Villette de Bordeaux, which I would consider a standard of all fig varieties. I don't really value as much here because in the cracks of the fig, frequently as it's starting to dry and shrivel on the tree, there's mold that forms in the cracks. And it's green, just like what you saw. Um, so I don't know. You can definitely tell the one I just harvested is not as ripe as these other two. And it's really in that neck. You could tell by the pith, which is that 
white or yellow ring around the pulp in kind of um, underneath the skin. If you think about a tree, there's the bark and then the inner layer is the cambium. It's the same thing. It's the skin, then the inner layer is the pith. It's just too firm, especially at the neck. But let me try it. It's actually strikingly beautiful and it's getting this darker ring to it. Um, the fig I'm eating right now and the other one I harvested, been it's sitting in the fridge for just a day. It's very sweet. It's definitely got interesting fruit flavors, like almost like papaya. It's got like a tropicalness to it. And um, it's extremely sweet, really sugar fig, like a sugar fig, but it's, it's half sugar fig, half honey fig. You taste that honey, you taste that awesome sweetness. And it has like this interesting tropical flavor. Undoubtedly is one of the better honey figs I've ever tasted. So if you're a big fan of honey figs, I actually think this one is a must try. Um, it tastes better than Dotato. It tastes better than LSU Champagne. Um, it tastes better than LSU Gold. It's gonna taste better. Uh, it's close with Barbalone, although Barbalone is a uh, is sugar fig, half sugar fig, half honey fig as well. Um, I think it's up there with Zafiro and Barbalone, and those are my favorites. Uh, so to me, this is an impressive fig. Um, you can see there's honey, honey pooling there. It's really good. Let me try the one that's underripe or less ripe. More honey flavor, less sugar fig, less tropical flavor. Maybe if you close your eyes, you can imagine banana. But I think there it is, guys. I don't know what else to say about this fig. I'm, I'm interested to see what other people think after growing this fig for a number of years. But uh, I do think it does take a little bit of time to come into its own. It did take me a little bit of time. And I don't like the form all that much. Um, but having said that, it's, it's stood up and it's become a productive, um, and I would consider it a reliable fig. Uh, I may even plant this one in the ground, believe it or not, considering how good it is for uh, being a honey fig. So anyway, that's Marangiana. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit that like button. See you for the next one. Take care.